Hello, uh, thank you for uh, joining me here and uh, watching this. Um, today I've, I've just been sitting here and doing some uh, reflecting and thinking a lot. Uh, as many of you know, uh, for the past uh, 40 some days, um, I have been dealing with uh, COVID and the uh, after effects of COVID. And in many ways, the post-COVID uh, syndrome, whatever they call it now, is, uh, has been much worse for me than uh, the actual COVID experience. And um, I had a pretty moderate case of COVID. Uh, the 14 days, I was pretty sick. Uh, but after I was able to break isolation and uh, come out of it, some of those longer lasting effects of it have been pretty devastating and um, fortunately uh, forced me to uh, go back inward. Um, kind of had to kind of go through a, a little bit of a, a, a dark night of the soul, if you will. Um, and so I'm grateful for this experience and I'm grateful that uh, God didn't waste uh, my illness, and he was able to use it for something good. And as anybody knows or has followed any of my teachings or preachings before, there's no way I believe that God got me sick. I don't believe God gave me COVID. I wasn't being punished for, for anything wrong. But he used it as an opportunity to grab a hold of his son and bring him back uh, to who he is supposed to be. And, and not that I'm there or I will ever be there, um, but to get me back on, on the right path because I've realized for a while now um, I haven't been uh, living the life in which I was supposed to. And uh, I have been actively trying to uh, get out of my calling I have been actively trying to escape uh, God's grasp on me. And uh, so luckily he used this time of sickness, this time of illness to, to draw me back. And so today I, I've really been reflecting on this idea of hycheatas, <laughs> as I'm sure many of you are. Uh, it's a concept com that comes from a, a Scottish friar early in the 1300s named Don Scottis. And um, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, I'm sure uh, most of us have uh, Don Scottis in, as a part of many of our daily conversations and his concept of hycheatas. But, um, you know, sometimes God does some weird things and, and brings some weird things into you to, in, on certain days. And so I started my day today just by... Uh, spending some time with Thomas Merton. And as many of you know, if anybody who's ever listened to me or knows me knows that Thomas Merton has had a profound impact on my life. And I started my day by, by seeing this quote from Thomas Merton, and, and I shared it on social media, and I've just kind of been reflecting on it all day today. And so just a little bit of background. Thomas Merton was always very leery of uh, technological advancement, and he was very leery of our human desire um, to chase technology. And at the time he, he wrote this, uh, I think it was late 1967, uh, you know, right in the middle, you know, the space race, and we're trying to get to the moon. Um, he wrote this. He says, even if we can fly, so what? There are, ant there are flying ants. Even if man flies all over the universe, he is still nothing but a flying ant until he recovers a human center, a human spirit, and the depth of his own being. What can we gain by sailing to the moon if we're not able to cross the abyss that separates us from ourselves? This is the most important of all voyages of discovery, and without it, all the rest are not only useless, but disastrous. And so uh, what Thomas Merton is saying here basically describes me. Um, I was trying to 
escape. I was trying to fly all over the universe and, and make great achievements in my personal life and my professional life, but avoiding going in the, in the right direction, which is inward. And, and so as human beings, we spend all this time chasing and chasing and chasing and striving after things, but we're, we're avoiding the recovery of our human center, our human spirit. What can, what can we gain by sailing to the moon if we're not able to cross the abyss that separates us from ourself? And, and, this, and this is what's led me down this rabbit hole today of, of chasing this concept of hychaetas, which hychaetas is a Latin word that means thisness. It's the thisness of you that makes you distinct from me. My hycheitas is what distinguishes me from you. It's my thisness. It's my center of my being uh, that's very unique. And it's true and it's real. It's God's image of me. And so as I kind of try to journey through, our, through my life and as you try to journey through your life, we spend so much time trying to go out and not a whole lot of time trying to go in. Because, you know, for me, maybe it's a fear. It's a fear that I need the, to go out to get the approval to get the validation because maybe I don't feel it inside and maybe I'm not worthy to find it inside of me, but I need it to find it externally from somebody else. I don't know. But what I do know is I want to find my hycheitas. I want to find the thisness. I want to find the thing in, that God put in me. I don't want to try to fly to the moon. I want to try to fly to the center of my soul to find my hecheitas, to find the piece of me that makes me unique, that makes me me, that makes me special. Thomas Merton writes this in uh, New Seeds of Contemplation. He says, No two things are created, no two beings are exactly alike, and their individuality is no imperfection. On the contrary, the per perfection of each created thing is not merely in its conformity to an abstract type, but in its own individual identity within itself. It's hycheitas. That's what we're talking about here. And so if you, if you do some research on, on Duns Scotus and, and understanding this concept, this is the true self. This is who we are. It's, it's that... Um, it's... it's It's that own individual identity that we all have that make us unique because Thomas Merton also says here, he says, every one of us is shadowed by an illusionary person, a false self. This is the man that I want myself to be, but who cannot exist because God does not know anything about him. And to be unknown of God is altogether too much privacy. So there's an illusionary me, an illusionary version of myself that I was chasing after, that I was trying to make my true self. The problem is, is that every sign, every step along the way, God was trying to tell me that is not who you are. That is not your hycheitas. That is not the center of your being that makes you mine. But it's your escape from what I thought was, you know, when I was trying to flee ministry, I was trying to run away from it because it's hard. You know, everybody I ever talked to about ministry before going into ministry told me it's hard. And I would look at it from the outside, like, no, nah, it looks easy. You know, you get up one day a week and you talk. You know, you, you spend your days hanging out in an office by yourself and you make some phone calls and you, you visit some people and, and, and you just do church on Sunday. How hard can that be? And ministry is very hard. Everybody was right and I was wrong. Imagine that. 
And because it got hard, and when it got hard, I was trying to run away. I was trying to escape. And I was trying to escape into an illusionary person that I was creating. But yet I couldn't escape God. I couldn't escape my hechetas. Because the more I, I was the more I was getting away, the more I was trying to escape, the more lonely I got, the more afraid I got. And then I got sick. And that was hard. COVID and, and post-COVID uh, were the hardest things I've ever had to go through. And I recognize I haven't had a very hard life. I've been very blessed. I don't come from much. I don't come from a lot of money. Um, you know, I haven't been given a lot of things. That, um, but I also haven't had to struggle in a lot of ways other people have. I've always had enough. And, uh, you know, I'm almost 40 years old and I still have a grandparent alive. All of my grandparents were alive into my 20s. Both my parents are alive. I, I haven't had to deal with a lot of loss and death. I haven't had that hard of a life. And I recognize that and I'm grateful for that. But COVID was really hard. And it got me to see that that illusionary person that I was trying to create, that I was trying to run away from, because my calling got hard, it wasn't real. And that person was completely unknown to God. I'm a guy who likes my privacy. I don't put a lot of things on Facebook. I, you know, you'll never get a, a birthday update for me on Facebook because I don't put my birthday on there because that's my private information. Why do you need to know my birthday? You know, I don't put my kids and stuff on Facebook because that's my private. Those are my kids. I'm not putting them on Facebook. Facebook isn't going to own images of my children. I'm a pretty private guy. But being unknown to God is way too much privacy for me. And so I want to take a journey. I want to stop trying to fly to the moon. And I want to try to cross the abyss that has separated me from myself. I want to try to cross the abyss that has separated me from my hycheatas, my thisness, that piece of me that makes me me. And I want to try to help other people because this is important. All of us, all of us have an image of God in which we were created talked about this before. I don't believe that when it says we were created in the image of God, we're not created to look like God or to be like God. But God had an image of us as individuals. And he created us in his image of us. And so I was created to look like what he wanted me to look like. And this isn't physical. And what I realized through my reflection and meditation today that the image of God is my hecheatas. The image of God is my thisness. It's my thing that makes me me. And I'm never going to find it externally. I'm never going to find it in being validated by somebody. The only way to find it is to take a journey into what Teresa of Avila calls the internal castle, the interior castle, I'm sorry. And by going through, going into my interior castle. By stopping, by, by not trying to go to the moon anymore. But by trying to go to the depth of my being. I will find my thisness. I will find my hecheatas. I will find me. And that is all God wants from me is to be me. As many of you will know, if you followed any of my teachings before, one of the main premises of my teachings is Bernard of Clairvaux's Four Degrees of Love. In the fourth degree, the highest degree of love that we can achieve is when we love ourselves 
for God's sake? And how can I possibly love me for God's sake? If I don't understand my thisness. If I don't understand my hychaetas, the thing that makes me me, the thing that makes me unique and special. So let's take a journey. Let's do it together. Let's journey into a new humanity. Let's journey into a new way of living. Let's journey into ourselves so we can learn who we are. Which, give us, which will give us a deeper understanding of who you are, who they are, and learn to love in a completely different way. Because the other goal that I have in my life that I've gotten through this journey, I started, it started to come to fruition before I got sick with COVID. But it's recognizing my call. Several years ago, I went to a place here locally in Ohio, right on Lake Erie, called Beulah Beach. It's a Christian Missionary Alliance uh, camp, and they allow pastors to go there and, and stay two days, twice a year for free, in a little cottage for ret personal retreat and spiritual reflection. And I, I usually take them up on about once a year. And several years ago, in 2017, the heart of my spiritual deconstruction. Um, I had no idea who I was. I had no idea why I was here. And so I went to Beulah Beach and I fasted and I prayed and I read scripture and I walked and I looked out over the water and I asked God, who am I? And clear as day in the depth of my soul, I heard him say, you are my son. You are my son. That is who I am. That will who, that's who I will always be. In Matthew 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And so what I realized in the last few months is that my calling is to be a peacemaker because I am God's son. And if I want to be God's son, I need to be a peacemaker. And that's what this journey is all about. Learning to love me. Learning to love and know my hycheatas, my thisness, so I can love me. And if I learn how to love me as myself, then I will learn how to love my neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the one commandment we have been given. If I want to love you, I have to love me. In order to fully love me, I have to understand what makes me me. I have to understand my thisness, my hycheatas. So I want to thank you for... Uh, watching this. I hope this is helpful. I mean, it is for me. I just, like I said, I just needed to get this out. I needed to get this off my chest because I didn't know what else to do with it. So thank you uh, for taking the time to watch. Uh, thank you. And I hope that all of us can take a journey into our hycheatas. Thank you.